Look, I know this is a fitness channel, but today I want to give you a secret that could help you earn more money at work and live a healthier life. What's good, Simple Achievers? Steve Hicks here, online fitness coach for Simple Success Fitness. And today I want to go a little bit left field. I want to talk about pay raise negotiations at work and how those lessons apply to a healthy living. Now, before I go in, I do want to give a disclaimer. I'm not a meat seti. I'm not Chris Voss. I'm not going to give you some high level negotiation tactics or some negotiation psychology. If you're looking for that, there are better people to look for. This is a fitness channel. Let's not forget that. And I'm going to bring this all back to healthy lifestyles. But just go along with me for this allegory for the pay raise. Last week, I was working on the first draft of an upcoming book that I'm working on called Fat Loss Workouts Made Simple. And in there, I was laying out some secrets that I discovered that I just love so much. I couldn't wait for the book to finish. I had to give that to you now because I think... I think this has the power to change your life. Now, what we want to do is we want to talk about the allegory of the pay raise. Why is a fitness guy talking about a pay raise? Well, the reality is healthy lifestyle habits, they're pay raises we give ourselves. So to be able to give yourself that pay raise, you have to know the secrets of negotiating for a pay raise in general. And there's two major components that we need to know about this. The first major component is going to be the mood of your boss, right? If you come into your boss on a day when they come into the office or the workspace and they're mad, maybe they had some struggles at home. Maybe they're mad about struggles in the office. They might come in saying, man, I work with a bunch of incompetent nincompoops. Or maybe they're mad. Maybe sales are down. Maybe profits are down. Maybe they're a little concerned for their own job. And you come asking for a pay raise. It's not going to happen. You can't ask a negative boss for a pay raise because they'll always say no. At, at best, at best they'll say no. There is the possibility they might give you a boot in the rear and tell you to get out of here. So you want to gauge the mood of your boss. On the other side, if your boss is in a positive mood where they're willing to help people, that is a better place to be working from. They're more likely to be open to negotiations about giving you a pay raise or giving you that promotion that you actually deserve. Now, so the main component that you need to know about is, first off, you have to know the, the mood of your boss. The second most important component is you have to ask properly. Your pay raise has to be a benefit. It cannot be a burden. And the reality is, most pay raises are going to come across as burdens. They're an expense. They're extra money coming out of the company. People aren't ready to jump into that, especially when money is involved. They have to see a real value behind that ask. But if you come into the negotiations, and this is a very general example, but if you mention like, hey, I was really excited last quarter to lead the team. We improved our efficiencies. Sales were up 10%. I, I would really like to receive maybe a 2% bump in my, in my pay so that I could be more excited to continue to lead these people to do this project and project Y and project X. And I believe those projects are going to boost productivity in this way. If you can package it in a way that it's a benefit to the company, that the company is going to get more value out of giving you money, then yeah, they'll agree to that more likely. So when you ask for a pay raise, you have to know the mood of your boss. You have to catch your boss on a positive mood and you have to make your, your, make your, uh, make your pay raise a benefit to the company, not a burden. These same lessons apply when we're trying to do a healthy lifestyle habit with ourselves, right? <coughs> Sorry about that. Let me get some water. And speaking of healthy lifestyle habits, drinking water is a good one. Now, when we ask ourselves for healthy lifestyle habits, we can be in one of two moods. We can be in a positive mood or we can be in a negative mood. Unfortunately, when people are wanting change, this is when they're in a little bit of a low. They're going to be coming in at a negative mood and that's already setting themselves up for failure, right? If you're already thinking like, man, I can't lose weight or I can't work out. I'm lazy. I'm undisciplined. This is everything's falling apart around me, nothing is good for me. These are not thoughts that are going to really inspire healthy lifestyle adaptations. They're not going to inspire change. 
They're just going to make you feel down and say no to every healthy habit that you try to adopt to. So what I recommend people do is I, I have all my online clients start the day with a daily gratitude post where they share a gratitude post and then they can read and reflect on other people's gratitude. They start the day with an overabundance of positivity and this is very intentional. What I want people to do is when they first ask themselves for either that morning workout or for a healthy breakfast or for a healthy lunch, they're in a positive mood where they're more willing to give themselves that positive healthy habit. So I have people start the day with a daily gratitude post, but we can go deeper on this too. If you want, you can even, you can even journal 10 awesome things about yourself, 10 awesome things that you're happy about, 10 things that are just really great and inspiring in your life, right? The more, the more positive positivity you feed yourself, the more your mood elevates. And when you're in an elevated mood, you're more likely to do positive things for yourself if you're feeling positive. It's almost like they're the same word. And then the second thing that we can do is when we ask ourselves for, for healthy lifestyle habits, for healthy changes, for either exercising more often or eating well, we have to phrase this in a way that's a benefit to ourselves and not a burden. This is the way that I see people fail the most. Honestly, most people's goals are about being a burden to themselves. If you're thinking about, I want to lose 10 pounds, you're thinking about you're not being good enough that you need to be less of who you are. You're thinking about all the things that will make you gain weight that you can't have. If you're thinking about eating well and you're thinking about sacrificing or giving up carbs or giving up sugars or, or not being able to go out for pizza on the weekends with your friends, those are all burdens. That's giving stuff up. No one wants that. So if you ask someone for, for something that's a burden, they're going to say no. If you ask yourself for something that's a burden, they're, you're going to say no. So what we want to do is we want to frame our goals and we want to frame our habits in a way that it's a benefit, not a burden. So instead of trying to lose 10 pounds where you're not good enough, we can say, I want to be leaner where I like myself more than I like myself now, right? Or we can think about, I want to be stronger I want to be more physically capable. I want to be able to go hike on the weekends with my friends. I want to gain something from this experience. I want to gain new experiences. I want to gain new potential and new, new opportunities. I want to gain things that I've never had before. Thinking about what you're benefiting, that's going to be good. When you think about changing your, your eating habits, it's not about what you're giving up. It's about gaining so many more nutrients so that you can feel more vitality in your day so that you can feel more energized so that you can regulate energy better you have to think about the things you're going to gain and not about the burden of itself so these are two really important things that you need to know if you're going to negotiate a pay raise at work or if you're going to negotiate a pay raise with yourself you have to gauge the mood of your boss you have to try to control the mood of your boss and catch it on a positive mood not a negative mood and you have to make sure that your ask is a benefit, not a burden. And if you use these two things, I can guarantee at the very least, you'll successfully adopt a healthy lifestyle habit and accept the pay raise you give yourself and you just might make more money at work. So put these to use, put those two components, gauging the mood of your boss, whether that's an external boss or your own internal boss, and then make sure that what you ask is a benefit not a burden. And if you do those two things, you and I together will live a healthier, happier life.